So good morning to everyone present here. Today I will be teaching you part two of chapter one, the living world. So in today's class we will see the second concept, which is diversity in the living world. Okay, under this topic we will study three major topics. Okay, or subtopics, which is biodiversity, systematics, and taxonomy. And under this two, under taxonomy we will be studying taxonomy in detail. And uh, you know, studying the different uh, steps uh, or different processes involved in taxonomy, there are four basic processes. Okay, we have characterization, identification, classification, and nomenclature. Okay, so let us start with the first topic, which is biodiversity. As the name suggests, biodiversity means diversity of biological life forms. Okay, diversity of biological life forms. It is nothing but a number of uh, species. Number of different organisms present in a particular area. Okay, is termed as biodiversity of that particular area. Okay? So the term biodiversity was coined by Walter G. Rosen in 1985, but it was popularized later on. The term was popularized later on by another scientist or another person uh, named Edward Osborne Wilson. Okay, so the number of species of organisms known to man so far are about 1.7 to 1.8 million species, meaning. That the biodiversity of planet Earth is around 1.7 to 1.8 million species. This many different types of organisms are present on planet Earth, which are which are known to man. Okay, there are there might be uh, several unknown species present to man, but as of now, 1.7 to 1.8 million species which are known to man are seen. Okay, so next we come to taxonomy. So what is taxonomy? It is nothing but the classification of organisms based on their characters okay so based on the characteristics of a particular organism they are put into different different groups okay so and they are classified okay so this is nothing but this is called taxonomy okay so under taxonomy we will see that there are four steps involved or four processes involved okay so we have under no order we have characterization identification uh, classification and nomenclature yes so if we see the order of this, uh, these processes, we have characterization first, that will be studying the characters of the organisms first, then we have identification, then we have nomenclature and followed by classification. Okay. So there are several scientists uh, who worked uh, in taxonomy, but I have uh, you know mentioned five of them who have been major contributors. Okay. So the first one is the person who termed taxonomy is A.P.D. Cantor. Okay, he is the one who termed the word taxonomy. Okay, then we have founder of taxonomy who is uh, Aristotle. Okay, Aristotle was the first scientist or the first person who study, uh, you know, the characters of organisms and classify them into various groups. Uh, can I give you an example? An example is uh, in plants, Aristotle classified the organisms into three groups. Okay, classified plants into three groups. Herbs, shrubs, and trees based on the height. Based, so, height was a character here. Based on the height, he classified plants into herbs, shrubs, and trees. Okay. And in animals, he classified them into organisms or animals without RBC who were termed as anaima and organisms with RBC who were termed as inaima. So, two groups. Okay. Then we have father of taxonomy, whom you all know is uh, Carolus Linnaeus. Okay, he has worked extensively on the on the, on taxonomy on this topic. Okay, and he has wrote several books in which he has uh, you know uh, uh, named millions of organisms or you know millions of organisms and he has studied the characters of so many organisms. Okay, and that is why he is rightly termed as father of taxonomy. And then we have father of Indian taxonomy who is Santa Pau. Santa Pau was Spanish in origin and he was a uh, Jesuit priest. Okay, He studied the uh, Indian flora in extensive measures. Okay, All over the country he studied the Indian flora and he, he was also responsible for giving names or uh, scientific names to majority of the Indian flora. Okay, And then we have last but not the least we have Julian Huxley who will the father of new systematics or new taxonomy. Okay. Next, next we see what is systematics and what is biosystematics. 
systematics is nothing but the evolutionary relationship between different organisms okay how are two organisms you know um, how did two organisms come from the same ancestor is what is systematics and biosystematics is nothing but the classification of organisms based on their evolutionary history and establishing their phylogeny meaning a phylogeny a connection a tree kind of a uh, connection okay as we see in the uh, picture we see that in the roots uh, the amoeba is present or the microorganism is present so who is the ancestor of all the organisms which are present in the branches okay so we branch out and which branch branches out first and which branch branches out second it tells us okay, how advanced an organism is okay so we see on the left side we have plants which are completely different from the right side which are animals especially mammals okay so carolus linnaeus explained the concepts of taxonomy and systematics in his book systema naturae okay the term systema means systematic arrangement of organisms okay which led to the derivation of the word systematics okay so systematics the, the study systematics was derived from the term system okay so it's nothing but systematic arrangement of organisms okay so the term systematics was also coined by carolus linnaeus okay uh, after a few years uh, a scientist named julian huxley in 1940 gave a new term new systematics uh, okay which was also termed as biosystematics okay which we which we saw in the previous slide is nothing but the classification of organisms based on evolutionary history okay so hence uh, julian huxley was regarded as the father of new systematics or new taxonomy so in need uh, they will not only ask you who is the father of biosystematics or new systematics they can even ask you who is the father of new taxonomy okay who is nothing but julian huxley now let us go to the four basic uh, processes of uh, taxonomy in this order okay the first one is characterization characterization is nothing but the study or understanding of characters of organisms okay so first we see we see and we observe okay an organism has what kind of different characters we not only see the external characters or external structures but also the internal structures we not only see the structures but also the structure of the cell the developmental processes how it develops okay and then we also see the ecological information of the organism which is nothing but how it reacts or how it uh, you know socializes with other organisms in the uh, what do you call it ecosystem then we have identification so based on the characters that we study we identify a particular organism and for example we see in the chart on the right that there are different trees uh, photos of different trees given followed by their leaves and leaf structure and then you know the branch and the branch also so based on the canopy of the tree what is canopy of the tree it is nothing but the shape of the tree okay based on the canopy of the tree based on the leaf shape based on the leaf arrangement on the branches uh, based on the leaf apex based on the leaf base based on the leaf margin we see that we can identify a particular tree okay so after studying the characters all these characters of the trees we identify them okay so after identify them after identifying them what do we do we name them okay so naming will go a little later first let us see classification okay it is nothing but grouping of organisms into convenient categories or taxa okay so this is based on the characters okay so we see that the so before we go into classification let us understand what is a taxon okay so here we see several taxa taxa is nothing but the plural of taxon okay so from the bottom we see kingdom kingdom is the biggest taxon followed by phylum class order family genus species species is the smallest uh, taxonomic category or smallest taxa uh, taxon okay so yes so it involves a hierarchy of steps what involves the classification involves a hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a taxonomic category as we see in the picture okay every rank category or taxon represents a unit of classification it is a brick it is a brick to build the 
how which is the classification tree okay so a group of organisms occupying a particular category is called the taxon what a group of organisms uh, uh, occupying a particular category is called the taxon okay example mammalia so mammalia is a class okay which comes under chordates which comes uh, under animal kingdom okay so uh, seeing the picture let us discuss a little bit on the picture okay the we are talking about kingdom animalia okay and we are talking about homo sapiens so how do we classify homo sapiens so the first character we see is in kingdom so organisms which are able to move organisms which are not able to move so organisms which are able to move are put under kingdom animalia which are not able to move are put under kingdom plantae and fungi and whatever okay so in under kingdom animalia we have several phylum okay here we see phylum chordata we the which are animals with a backbone okay then we have class mammalia which are chordates who have fur on their fur or hair on their body and mammary glands or milk glands is present then we have primata primata are mammals which have a collarbone and grasping fingers who have grasping fingers okay then hold something and the primates we have hominid hominids are primates who have relatively flat faces okay and a three dimensional vision okay we can see everything in three dimension and the genus uh, which comes under the family hominids is homo okay which we have a prime posture and large brain capacity under homo we have the species which is homo sapiens who have high foreheads and thin skull bones okay so this is how you classify homo sapiens okay based on uh, characters so now we will see all the seven uh, taxonomy categories and how they are uh, you know important in classification you know so in this uh, uh, slide we see that the order of taxonomy is uh, taxonomic categories is given okay in this uh, with example mangifera indica we see that the topmost uh, Uh, category is kingdom. Under kingdom comes division. Okay, so since this is plants, in plants there is no phylum. There is only division. Okay, so we have division, embryo, phyta. Then we have class, order, family, genus, species. Okay, kingdom, division, class, order, family, genus, species is the order which we have to follow. Okay. so starting with the smallest taxonomic category which is species okay it is nothing but the group of closely related organisms which can uh, interbreed with each other okay so uh, which means that two organisms can be put into one species only if they can interbreed to uh, produce fertile offspring okay even though a uh, leopard looks similar to cheetah they cannot be put under same species because they cannot reproduce among themselves okay a leopard can only reproduce with the leopard a cheetah can only reproduce with the cheetah okay so that is why they are considered two different species okay so species are also the lowest category okay of a taxonomic category the term species was coined by john gray so the term as a species as a group is not only the smallest uh, unit of i mean what do you call it a uh, classification but it's also the only real basic unit of classification okay species is the only thing which you can say is real okay a group of humans a group of cheetah a group of uh, lions okay so these we can say that they are real but when you say a family of cats which involve a group of several species or a group of several genuses okay which is not real which is which we are just making up so that we can group them into one one particular uh, category okay so except species all other taxonomic categories are man made okay so here we have uh, what do you call it uh, the species name the species name of uh, different different organisms so, so under the potato tomato and brinjal they all have the same genus name they all come under same genus which is solana and, but because they are belong to different species they have different species name potato is solana tuberosum Tomato is Solanum lyco lyco persicum, Brinjal is Solanum melongena. Okay, similarly with other examples as well. Okay. Next is the next taxonomic category is genus. Okay, genus is nothing but 
a group of species which show similar characters okay these are group of species which show similar characters okay let us consider the example of potato brinjal and mccoy that belong to three different species but belong to the same genus solana okay hence they are put under genus solana okay similar it goes to uh, it goes with uh, panthera genus panthera they are all big cats okay they are all big wild cats okay that is why they are put under genus panthera which includes lion leopard tiger and so on and then we have genus felis which are small cats which are also small cats okay it can be it can be called domesticated cats or uh, what do you call it uh, uh, small cats basically yes so we have felis domesticus and felis shaws which come under this genus okay then coming to the next the taxonomic category which is family so a group of uh, related genus a group of related genera uh, can be put under one family okay for example uh, uh, something which you would understand is uh, the cat family the dog family okay something like that so the cat family includes both the genus panthera and genus felis okay which includes both the big cats as well as the as well as the small cats okay will to come under one big cat family okay family felidae so in plants the names of the family ends with the suffix ac family solanaceae okay which includes uh, genus is like genus solanum genus petunia genus datura and so on whereas in animals the names of the family ends with the suffix idae okay felidae hominidae and so on Okay. Also, one important point is the families are characterized on, uh, on the basis of both vegetative as well as reproductive features. Okay, here both the vegetative features are also seen and reproductive features are also seen in plants. Okay, for classification in plants. Next uh, uh, taxonomic uh, category is order. Okay, it includes a group of similar families. Okay, that exhibit a similar characters. Okay. the similar characters are less in uh, number when compared to different genera okay so now as we go higher on the taxonomy categories okay the number of similar category uh, similar characters decreases okay so since order has order is uh, on a higher taxonomy category as compared to genus it has less uh, similar characters among its members okay so in plants uh, we see based on the floral character the main word here is floral character based on the floral character plant families like uh, convolvulaceae and solanaceae are included under order polymoniales okay so as we see in the name the name of order in plant ends with the suffix ales okay polymoniales okay whereas in animals there is no such specific suffix seen um, as far as i know uh, majority of the order in animal ends with the word, uh, letter a okay Order Carnivora, order Primata, okay, so something like that. So under uh, order uh, Carnivora, we have family Felidae, which is the cat family, and family uh, Canidae, which is the dog family. They all come under Carnivora, okay. Next, next we have taxonomy category, which is class, okay, which comes above order. So it is a group of uh, similar or related orders, okay. For example, under class Dicotyledonae, we have order Polymoniales and order Sapindales. Okay. Whereas under class Mammalia, we have order Primata and order Carnivora. Okay. Then we have the next category, which is phylum in terms of Animalia and division in terms of Plantae. So it is the assemblage or group of related classes. Okay. So uh, in Animalia, the term Phylum was termed by or proposed by Cuvier. Okay, whereas the term division was proposed by Eichler. Okay, so in plants the division was termed by Eichler. In animal, uh, phylum was termed by Cuvier. Okay, so examples are given under division Spermatophyta or subdivision Angiospermae. We have two classes, which is Dicotyledonae and class Monocotyledonae, which is nothing but Dicots and monocots. Okay, and under phylum Chordata, we have uh, four classes, which are amphibia, reptilia, apes, and mammalia, which are nothing but amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. And then we have the last category, which is the highest category, which is kingdom. Okay, 
kingdom includes a group of related phyla or a group of related division in terms of plant kingdom okay so examples of kingdom plantae and the kingdom plantae we have division bryophyta division spermatophyta we have division pteridophyta okay and thallophyta whereas in kingdom animalia there are 34 phyla present in today as we as we know of today okay 34 phyla but in the further chapters we will study about 10 of the major phyla under kingdom animalia examples uh, of some of the phyla uh, phylum chordata which includes mammals which includes humans and phylum arthropoda which includes insects okay yes so also one important point is now as we go higher on the taxonomic categories the number of similar characters goes on decreasing okay meaning for example any genus okay has members with more similarities as compared to family or class or order or higher grade of classification which has members with fewer similar similarities or fewer, fewer similar characters among them okay so uh, we can say that uh, as we go uh, what do you call it from the higher uh, category to a lower category the number of similarities increases okay as we go from kingdom to species it increases and as we go from species to kingdom it decreases we clear with this concept okay so now we will see organisms with their taxonomic categories okay so we see that how based on uh, uh, what do you call it their characters they are separated okay let us see organisms with their taxonomic categories okay so uh, we have the common name of the organism and the taxonomic categories it belongs to okay and we will see okay, how based on as we go down every taxonomic category one organism is removed okay how and uh, we will see this okay so the first one is Louisiana live oak which is a plant okay so hence it belongs to the kingdom plantae whereas all the other examples belong to kingdom animalia okay next is phylum so it belongs to phylum trichophyta and the second example which is earthworm belongs to phylum annelida which separates it from all the other chordates okay chordata examples okay then we have the third one which is class louisiana live oak belongs to dicotyledonae okay earthworm belongs to clytelita okay and then we have goldfish which belongs to class actinoptery which is which comes under a super class Pisces okay you know Pisces no? which is a group of fishes okay whereas all the other organisms belong to mammalia okay they belong to mammals okay then we have order in which the live oak belongs to the order Fagales we have earthworm which belongs to Opisthophora we have goldfish which belongs to Cypriniforms and then we have killer whale okay or orca which belongs to Artiodactyla okay which are aquatic mammals okay whereas all the other uh, examples belong to the order primata which is the monkey family okay or monkey group not the monkey family the monkey group okay then we have family based on family the live oak belongs to the family Fagaceae the earthworm belongs to Lumbri Lumbricidae the goldfish belongs to Cyprinidae the killer whale belongs to Delphinidae the tailed uh, ring tail lemur belong to lemuridae okay so we see what we see here you need to notice two points the first point is the plant family ended with ac whereas all the uh, other animal families ended with ed okay and we, as we discussed in the previous slide also that the lemuridae is, is separated out from all the other examples which belong to hominidae okay which are upright primates okay whereas these uh, lemuridae are they bend and walk on four legs whereas these upright mammals uh, prefer to walk on two legs mostly okay. then we have genus where all the examples belong to different different genus where human is separated as uh, separated as homo and the rest two examples are the uh, chimpanzee group okay where one is the pygmy chimpanzee 
which is the bonobo, which uh, whose species name is Pan paniscus. The other one is your normal chimpanzee, which is Pan troglodytes. Okay, so this is how we not only uh, saw the taxonomic categories of different organisms, but we also classified them into different groups and we separated them out into different groups. Okay. And the last, we have come to the last point of uh, uh, this class, which is nomenclature. Okay, so as the name suggests, nomenclature is nothing but naming of an organism. Okay, so uh, generally there are two types of name. Okay, one is the vernacular name. Okay, and the other one is the scientific name. The vernacular name can also be referred to as a local name or the name given to an organism in partic that particular region. Okay. The scientific names uh, are given uh, as exclusive names. Okay, this particular name uh, is given to this particular organism and is not given to any other organism. Okay, so we see scientific name ensures that each organism has one exclusive name and no other name, meaning that the name will not be used for any other organism. Okay, except the one it is assigned to. Okay, so let us see binomial nomenclature, which is. Uh, the major, uh, what do you call it, example of scientific name. Okay, we have binomial nomenclature. We also have something called as trinomial nomenclature. But we follow binomial nomenclature as a generic naming, uh, what do you call it, tool. Okay, so the system of naming with two components is called binomial nomenclature, meaning a name has two parts. Okay, it was proposed by Carolus Linnaeus, and the naming of organisms was to be done by following certain principles and criteria. Okay, which are set up by international bodies. Okay, so the, uh, that name can be referred to by all the countries. Okay, not only one particular country or one particular region. Okay, so it has to be followed up by some rule. Okay, so who, what do you call it, uh, what do you call it, uh, sets up these rules and who follows these rules is nothing but uh, International Code of Biological Nomenclature. Okay, they are responsible for naming of plants and animals. All the plants and animals is International Code of Biological Nomenclature. But then later on, um, different different groups were assigned to different bodies. Okay, So we have ICBN, which was nothing but Botanical Nomenclature. We have ICZN, which is nothing but Zoological Nomenclature. We have ICVN, which is nothing but Viral Nomenclature. We have ICNCP, which is nothing but Code of Nomenclature of Cultivated Plants. And then we have ICNB, which is nothing but International Code of Bacteriological Nomenclature. Okay, don't get confused with ICBN and ICNB. ICNB is for bacteria, whereas ICBN is for botanical nomenclature. Okay, so now let us look into the rules of binomial nomenclature. Okay, there are four general rules. Okay, so the first one is that the scientific name should be in Latin or Latinized. Okay. And are always typed in italics. Okay, when they are typed, they are always typed in italics. Okay, but when they are handwritten, they are supposed to be underlined separately. Meaning, there are two names. So the first name should be underlined separately. The second name should be underlined sec uh, separately. Okay. Then we have that the first name always denotes the genus name to which it belongs. Okay, the name of the genus to which it belongs, and this name is called the generic name. And the second word is always the species name, the species to which it belongs, and this is called as specific epithet. Okay, so the binomial name is made up of two names or two parts. The first part is the genus name or called the generic name, the second part is the species name or the specific epithet. Okay, the genus name, so now when writing or when typing, the genus name always starts with a capital letter. Okay, whereas the species name is always written in the small letters. Okay, no exception. The genus name starts with a capital letter and the species name is written in the small letters. Okay. And if there is an author's name which is to be mentioned, his name is mentioned after the name okay, and in an abbreviated form. Okay. Let us look at the example. We see Hibiscus rosa sinensis lid, okay, which translates to shoe flower. Okay, you know the hibiscus flower, no? So, yes, the hibiscus forms a genus name. The rosa sinensis, even though it has a hyphen in between, it is one word and it is the species name. It is written in small letter. It forms the species name. And then we have Lin, which stands for Linnaeus, since he was the author. Who, he was the one who gave the name. Okay, Author of the name is Linnaeus. 
you would have noticed that hibiscus rosa sinensis is written in italics whereas lin is not written in italics so the name of the author should always be typed in roman not in italics okay so this is how you write a scientific name and using binomial nomenclature okay let us see other examples we have the frog which is called uh, rana tigrina we have rose which is called rosa indica we have a p which is called pisum sativum and we have a man or a human being which is called homo sapiens okay so with this we come to the end of the second concept which was um, diversity in living organisms yes and this is me hussain signing off okay and see you in the next part which will be the final part taxonomical aids okay thank you and have a nice day